2024. Everybody come out with their great hopes, plans, uh, Nostradamus predictions for 2024. Hell, we even did it. Um, but the truth is, there's going to be underlining factors out there that affects supply and demand. It's going to affect productivity. It's going to affect a lot of things that's going on in the economy. And I believe it's one element a lot. And I've, I've heard a lot of, you know, quote unquote, financial gurus going out there saying what's going to happen in 2024. You know, everybody's predicting interest rates are going to drop. Housing demand is going to increase. Um, the economy is going to get back right. We're going to get into growth mode once the um, interest rates drop. And that's you for, for uh, the most part, that's what most people are saying. But today we're just going to talk about the flip side of that we're going to play devil's advocate of it and we'll go from there but alex what you got before i you know run off in the time machine and start this talking all day i guess so we're going to be talking about things that would stop the that kind of demand in the economy so mm -hmm. would this tie into maybe say things don't go as planned and interest rates stay where they're at or they keep rising maybe we see more job cuts, recessions type type of environment. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I believe that's that's the uh the role we're trying to trying to niche out in this video is that it's everything that people's predicting is not coming true. And the one main element that people I think are missing because of course they saw the interest rates drop and during COVID and then it's big demand just rushed in. But the element that they are forgetting or I guess on purpose or by mistake they're omitting is the Fed pumped in trillions of dollars into the economy to create that demand. If they lower interest rates now, there's not a trillion dollars that the Fed is pumping into the economy to create that demand. There's no stimulus money. There's no PPP loans. There's no enhanced unemployment. There's no enhanced food stamp and SNAP program benefits. It's strictly interest rates are lower, but where do the demand drive from? It's not going to drive from people that's in 3% mortgages that's trying to move up a house and they still got to pay 5 and 6% on the mortgage. That's not where the demand is going to come from. The demand won't come from people, let's say they, you know, they work in a nine to five. They've been wanting to buy a house. The number of people that want to buy a house. If you didn't buy during the COVID time when you had extra money and then interest rates was low, it's going to be much, much, much harder to in 2024 to buy a house at a at an interest rate. Well, forget the interest rate at a price monthly that will be comparable to less than what you're renting for right now it just is so let's say the interest rates come down to six but the house prices are going to go up the house that you could have bought for two hundred thousand dollars in 2020 now that same house is four or five hundred thousand you're going to put your three to five percent down then your mortgage payment is still going to be about 35 35 to four thousand dollars a month you see so where does the demand come from? The jobs are not increasing their pay on that scale to make people ability to afford that type of mortgage. I mean, I'm just looking in Florida, but other places is like that also. And then where do you get the supply from? I mean, on the investor side, investors are putting investment properties up for sale. And I'm not talking about single family, I'm talking more multifamilies. They're putting those up for sale, but they're still pricing them at a premium. The price, the house, the house that's going on the market are priced at a premium. It's not, you know, the old days of, you know, people talking about, oh, yeah, you buy a hundred thousand dollar house. Where are they making those at? <laughs> they ain't making those no more. You know, if you get a hundred thousand dollar house, it's work to be done. That's just the simple, simple matter of fact of it. And then you can't get a regular loan, you know, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac to prove if the house is not moving ready from the start. So where is the true demand coming from? That's the thing that I think is being omitted from a lot of these prognosticators uh, viewpoint of what's going on in 2024. 
Yeah, that's interesting. And I mean, so what do you see? I know we've seen some things in the news and like you shared some things in the class that we haven't talked about on this channel, but like, where do you see that the economy is headed? Do you see that it will head towards what everyone's saying of, you know, lower interest rates and stuff? Or are we starting to see some factors now that are shying away from that happening? The, lo the lower interest rate argument, could that be possible? Yeah, that that could be possible. But the thing is, is everybody's, you know, predicting that the lower interest rate will push demand forward. Yeah, that's that's the thing It's going to push demand forward. But demand from where? Right. I mean, most people interest rates on their homes are four four percent and below. So let's say they drop the interest rate rates now. I mean, let's look let's look at it. Uh, the past couple of months, the interest rate went from eight down to six five. December uh, year over year was still demand was still down eight percent from the previous year. In the previous year, twenty twenty two, the demand was high, but it wasn't you know record breaking, but it still was down. That I think it's people got this artificial belief that it's people just waiting and start it is people waiting on the sidelines waiting to buy a house but the mass numbers that they thinking i don't believe is there because the cost to buy a house now and that monthly payment is more than it would be to rent so unless you, unless you get that small group that just say oh i gotta own a house i gotta own a house and then you know then you add in pmi loans because most people don't have a 20 25 percent to put down I mean the the PMI that goes on top Jeez. of a home purchase, and then all that all that goes into the cost of living. Most most people, not most, ninety nine percent of the people in America live based off the monthly cost. The monthly cost, not oh, it's a three hundred thousand dollar house, four hundred thousand dollar house, five hundred thousand dollar house, million dollar house. It's how much do it cost per month, and to buy a house, I I believe still in twenty twenty four. It will be more to buy to buy and own a home on a monthly basis than it is to rent. I mean, years previous, you know, before 2020, that was inverse. It was switched around. You could buy a house and it could be the payments could be lower than rent. Of course, you got the other adage of now you're responsible for everything. But but now it's it's way more to buy or to own than to rent. So I don't think that demand, I think demand is fabricated and false of what people are predicting that's out there okay so with this year would you say that home prices would come down with less demand do you think prices will drop uh with less demand i it depends on how many how much is in the supply i think i think on the investor side the side that we deal in prices will come down but okay. on the regular mom and pop who live in a house that's trying to sell a house i mean why would you sell your house why would you go from a three percent mortgage to a six percent mortgage right unless you just oh i just have to move up i mean even people even people that is in a five hundred thousand dollar house that's trying to move down a house the monthly payments cost more if they move down the house than what they have now because of the low interest rate they already have yeah i mean and then other dynamics to that for 2024 people is not factoring this in now people are back to paying student loans so that's four to six hundred dollars a month out of their monthly budget that they haven't been paying for years now they having to pay that every month so now their debt to income ratio has dropped drastically and then the price of the home that comes into effect and that's the same thing with services and goods and things like that people are still going to spend on holidays they're still going to max out their credit cards to do all the funny stuff but the the things that people want to do the numbers are going to have to come down because it's just a lot of elements there's no more ppps there's no more enhanced unemployment you know in the job market you know we had a couple years of year over year growth in salaries you know four or five percent you know we we was getting up there but now i think we're going to contract back down to the two to three percent annual increases on on pay you know in florida we got the you know minimum wage 15 dollars an hour we're already there and it don't even go into effect until 2026 so people are already there 
And we've had this conversation uh, many a times. Well, I've had a conversation with a lot of people. Everybody was cheering the minimum wage going up to $15 in Florida. And then on, my only response to it was the economy will make sure that if you could not afford to live on unemployment, I mean, minimum wage, I said unemployment, or minimum wage when it was $10 an hour or $8, $8 an hour, the economy will ensure that you cannot survive on minimum wage at $15 an hour. Now, fast forward, now we're in 2024, there's nobody that's making $15 an hour. You can barely rent a place making $15 an hour now here in Florida, much less own a home because they didn't price all of those, all of that out of the market. And that's what they're going to keep doing. Every time they increase the minimum wage, it's just going to drive the prices up for everything else to ensure that the people on minimum wage cannot afford to live. Absolutely. With all that being said, guys, if you have any questions or comments, let us know down below. Share this video, like this video, subscribe, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you.